Hello and good evening. We have with us today Rakhi Segal, who is the Executive Council member of the New Trade Union Initiative and an active trade unionist. We are speaking specifically on the recently delivered Maruti workers uh, judgment in which as many as 13 workers were given life imprisonment and a total of 35 workers convicted and of course 117 acquitted. Thank you Rakhi for having this conversation. Thank you. First of course the Maruti workers judgment itself 18th March uh, and what it meant what it says when it particularly talks about the collective conscience and the Make in India com campaign, it appears that without any evidence, Correct. you have 13 workers being convicted, convicted to life imprisonment. The judge from Chandigarh, also from the Chandigarh High Court, also said the same thing that um, uh, we need to we need to keep in mind the um, investors' concerns and their sentiment, and therefore this bail cannot be given. The same thing was repeated by the special prosecutor, Mr. Huda when he came out of uh, the courtroom, that the investors can now uh, be confident that quote-unquote rule of law exists in Haryana and anyone creating trouble will be dealt with like this. So this has a chilling effect on, because as you can see, the 13 who have been given life uh, sentences are 12 union members and one Jialal who is a um, uh, Dalit worker who actually made the complaint on 18th um, uh, July 2012 about caste abuse that he had received from one of the managers which it, which started the entire incident of that day. So in a way it's saying caste abuse does not matter and in fact it is also saying you cannot organize trade unions in this belt because it dents the investor confidence and therefore and I also want to link it to what what Chief Minister Huda had said during 2011-2012 when the union was agitating to form uh, themselves into an independent union he, he actually categorically said we will not allow a union to be formed or registered in um, the Maruti plant in Manesar which is goes against the constitutional guarantees which goes against trade union right which in itself if the employer said it would be an unfair labor practice and here is a state functionary as high as a chief minister saying this so and that was the previous government that was the previous government so there i mean honestly there is no difference when it comes to uh, labor rights and trade union rights between uh, the various governments as long as they're wedded to big capital and corporate capital um, their attitude towards labor rights is going to be the same and that's what we've been seeing for the last at least 15 20 years to to maintain your figment of being a democratic nation vis-a-vis -vis the international community you will allow two percent of your workers uh, to be in the organized sector and under so-called uh, coverage of uh, labor laws whereas 98 97 percent of your workers are and this is the crux of make in india in fact uh, professor shurujit mojumdar from jnu has an argument saying that make in india and labor rights are incompatible. They will always be in conflict because the only um, uh, competitive advantage that India has is cheap labor. And how do you continue to keep cheap labor and also docile given that the living uh, uh, um, uh, condition of the workers is so dire is through repressive repression of uh, labor rights and any demand for labor rights. Can you just tell us from the, from the point of view of the workers who have been convicted, uh, where are the loopholes? The loopholes are in the fact and you know the four or five points that even the judge raises in the judgment. The fact um, that uh, firstly the identification of the so-called accused. The contractors identified them alphabetically and as the defense lawyers raised the issue Kya wo pe, were they standing alphabetically but in court they could not recognize them, could not identify them. Neither could Deepa Kanand who is the HR manager who actually filed the uh, FIR complaint. Um, that is one. They've arrested workers even before the FIR um, uh, was, listing out the uh, was workers signed. was formally filed. So that in itself shows fabrication. Prosecution has argued that workers were found with door beams. Now door beam is a huge piece of metal. Firstly, how did they leave the factory gate with, with these the door, door beam. beams? There is no complaint from the stores of Maruti that there are door beams and shockers which are, uh, which are missing. And there are numerous, that mm -hmm. you've gone to Hisar, You've gone to Kethal with these door beams in public transportation? Like, 
Isn't the first thing that an accused would do is throw away the weapon if indeed that was the weapon? Um, there are uh, discrepancies between the sketches uh, that were supposedly made at the time of recovery and the size of the door beam. Uh, there's the issue of how is it that in a, in a room where Avnish Dev, uh, the manager who died tragically, was found dead, the entire room is charred, but there is uh, undamaged a matchbox cover and the judge actually writes in the judgment that the prosecution is not making the argument that the matchbox cover lit the fire. So how is this particular judgment and a series of developments mm -hmm. in the sector. Mm -hmm. It is actually aimed at when, where different sort of uh, institutions are mm. being used to actually break the back of worker organization, right. the right to organize with dignity and worse than that to take back the victories of the struggle fought over 150 years. So how does this all weld with the new development model made more aggressive under Modi of course but it was Correct. already there before Correct. and what it means for the large section of Indians which are the working class? Um, what this really the message that is being sent out and it's being sent out for um, uh, numerous years is that you cannot organize and in fact um, if you look very closely at the way that the workers have been raising their demands um, that workers are actually trying to assert their citizenship rights. And they're trying to say that we are citizens, we will sit at the table equally with our employers. A feudal mentality that seems to pervade our employers is that um, if you try to organize, if you don't do what we are doing, what we are asking you to do, this is the fate that you will meet. After, after the 18th July incident, um, there was the media kept quoting or kept uh, putting out stories about Maoist uh, penetration of urban areas. The minute you raise the specter of Naxalism and Maoism, then it somehow creates this state of exception in that area and the rule of law can be dispensed with. Section 144, for example, has been used indiscriminately and unendingly. It's like AFSPA in the Northeast, Section 144 over here. 144 Lagadia, which means you can't come anywhere close to the plant and the plant can continue. Uh, to function with other workers. Right. What were the Maruti workers and all of you trying to do? What right. was the struggle about? The struggle was that the the uh, working conditions in the Manisa plant of Maruti were in, uh, onerous. Uh, workers were not allowed to take um, uh, toilet breaks. If uh, somebody had died in their family, they were told, Ab to wo mar gaya hai, tum shift khatam karke tab ghar jana. They were not being given leave to go for the uh, uh, birth of their own children. Um, if they took a sick leave, which is a Allowed under the standing orders, um, there were there there were massive deductions from their uh, wages and salaries. So lots and lots of these kinds of uh, issues were arising. And initially, the workers did approach the union in the Gurgaon plant to asking them to requesting them to agitate uh, on their All issues. Decisions. When that didn't, and they tried that for about a year. When that didn't meet with success, they decided to form their own independent union. At which point, management then tried to first derail. I mean, and we see a series of leadership being uh, thrown out. Being, um, but finally, with the help of the manager, actually who ended up dying on 18th, he was uh, very pro labor. He right? was very pro labor, and in fact, he had helped the union uh, uh, get their registration. So that happened. But so once the union got registered and they submitted their charter of demand to the management, the management refused or, or there was a farce of negotiation. They'd be called for meetings and nothing would happen because there was already that mistrust between the leadership and the workers. Management wanted to take advantage of that. Finally, there were, when there was some negotiation and what, and this is the, this is the threat to the entire capitalist class, which is why the Maruti movement has the significance that it does. The permanent workers uh, were agitating the cause of the contract workers and saying that whatever we are getting, you need to give that to the contract workers who are working uh, on the production lines uh, next to us. So it's coming back to that 18 July and before that, uh, there was heavy securitization. Cops were brought in. How, I mean, how did that work? So 18th July, the cops were called on, on, uh, to the factory and they are supposedly milling around the factory gate. And apparently there's this escalation of a conflict going on. 
uh, and the, none of the managers, and this is noted even in the judgment, none of the managers deem it fit to inform or ask for the intervention of the police. And private goons who are roaming the shop floor in uniform, in Maruti um, uh, workers' uniforms, oh. they could not produce any ID cards. Um, so, you know, the problem, and this was a similar um, kind of a tactic that even in Precol they'd used, trying to instigate violence when the violence, when the workers still continue to be non violent. But, the, but this. This penetrating, uh, this is something we all need to watch out for because if you see in the judgment, there's a very interesting interpretation of unlawful assembly where the judge is saying that um, I don't, we, you know, the, even if two people out of that uh, entire crowd has done something illegal, we're going to assume that all of you are guilty. You know, how does the wider civil liberties movement recognize and ally with this because there has been a certain distance. Uh, there has distance. been a certain distancing, but I think we need a closer um, coming together. And as the UN Special Rapporteur on uh, Freedom of uh, Association and Protest has made a plea that plea that human rights organizations need to incorporate labor rights into the into the core areas of their work. And I think the trade unions also need to allow. And I think what we need to understand is that each of us has a role to play in each of these struggles. Um, the shop floor and the trade union and the labor rights will be agitated by the trade unions. I don't think there's a role for NGOs or anyone else to do that. But there is a role for um, NGOs or, or, civil liberty or civil liberties groups to do the kind of fact finding uh, reports that they do to, to help in capacity building, uh, training of the workers in their, in, their, in their rights, to help train paralegal. You cannot defend labor rights uh, when there's a vacuum of uh, democratic. democratic rights. So yeah. to see that labor rights is also part of the continuum of democratic rights. Today you have an agitation, I think also. Today also we have a Chalo Mane Sir agitation uh, where even though again section 144 has been imposed till the 25th, uh, workers in various gate meetings uh, since the 18th have been um, uh, coming out and saying that we will join. So uh, they hope to uh, they determined to, I should say, uh, march from their factories when the A shift ends at 3 p.m. and march to uh, the Devilal Stadium at the um, uh, entrance of Manesa to hold a public Can meeting. Can we end with what, your one appeal to the media? <laughs> I think uh, the media should really um, understand ki, uh, you know, the famous they came for the uh, uh, communists and we were sleeping and then they came for the farmers, finally they're coming for us, which is exactly what is happening with the informalization of your own contracts um, and your own insecurity of your own employment. If you can see that logic, understand the logic of that and understand how this is, um, uh, this is underlying the neoliberal economic policies, regardless of which government is in power that this is going to eat you up. This is also eating up the future of your own children. Uh, everyone's going to be insecure. You are no longer, if you at one, at one time celebrated your, um, you know, your freelance career, that your freelance career is not going to ensure that your households run and that your children can go to the best schools. That is the same desire that these workers have, that we should be able to provide for a dignified life for our families and for ourselves, uh, wherever we work. And I think all of us desire that. So if you can see common cause with that and ensure uh, that if media doesn't do anything else, we're not saying side with the workers and that the workers are always right. Ask those critical questions that will lift the veil from um, the kind of bogus rhetoric that is being served up uh, to us. That is the opium of the masses, thank the you. media in particular. Raki, thank you so much. Thanks.